Welcome back to Cosmo Besedrian Reads, Chapter 9 of The Walking Dead, Hope. I'm Cosmo Besedrian. Let's continue where we left off. Louis and AJ took a seat on the other side of the desk, eyeing Javier. Under the faint light, light of the candles, Louis no noticed an older man's graying hair and beard. He had bags under his eyes, a faint and faint wink, wink, wrinkles had started forming on the edges of his eyes. It was then that the fragile man realized just how old Javi looked currently. So, Louis began by the way of introduction, making Javi look up from the map. Who was this Jesus character Gabe mentioned earlier? The older man sighed and propped his elbows on his desk, intertwining his fingers. He and his people helped Richmond a long time ago, when it was overrun by a herd. I reckon his group could have encountered the right arm in the past and could point out Point us in the right direction. But, Louis said, frowning, there's always a but. But it might be hard convincing him to help us, Javi explained, leaning back on his chair. A few years ago, the hilltop, that's the name of his community, was attacked by a group calling themselves the Saviors, and he sent for our help. And you didn't help them? Louis concluded, pinching the bridge of his nose. That's right. We were barely self-sustainable by them. By then, we couldn't handle losing people to someone else's war. Javi went on, closing his eyes. I wanted to help them. I really did. Sensing the sensitive topic, Louis cleared his throat. So where is this hilltop, was it? Javi nodded and pointing at the spot of the map. It had a drawing of a small mound of dirt on a plain a few miles from a town called Alexandria. The candles on either side of the map cast irregular shadows on the paper as Lewis examined it, calculating in his head the distance between there and Richmond. It's about 150 miles north, so we'll take a car, Javi assured him, seemingly reading Lewis's mind. We'll be there in a few hours. What about AJ? Lewis asked, gesturing the boy. Who, per who perked his head up at the mention of his name. He can stay with Gabe while we are out, Javi said, which earned a snort from Lewis. Really, Gabe? He questioned, crossing his arms. AJ followed the man's lead and crossed his arms as well, frowning at Javier. I know you don't trust him, Lewis, but he can take care of him for a day. Lewis weighed his proposal, eyeing, on his, eyeing AJ on his left. Although the prospect of leaving the boy with the man who'd come bearing the news of his wife's disappearance wasn't pleasant, time was of the essence. He didn't know how long Clementine had left, and he wasn't about to test his luck. All right, he breathed, shaking his head. But A.J. began before cutting off by Lewis. You'll be fine, little man, he assured him. I won't be gone long, and you can stay in your room and draw, right? I guess, A.J. shrugged, looking down at his hands. Then it's how ja Javi announced, getting up. The pair followed the leader outside, out of the office, nodding to the guard outside. When they got to the staircase, A.J. gave Moose a big hug, interacting, attracting, extracting other prom another promise to come back safely from Moose, and ran up the stairs toward his room. The two men chuckled and exited the building. They walked through the streets of Richmond toward the main gate, where two armed guards stood atop the high walls. A big red R had been painted on the inside of the gate. Lewis noticed. They walked to the right, where a small row of four cards stood. By the nearest one, Lewis spotted a gray-eyed woman fidgeting with her long, curly hair. Lizzie, he said, raising an eyebrow. Hey, Javi, she smiled enthusi enthusiastically. Lewis, she added, nodding at him. I asked her to come with us as reinforcement, Javi explained, handing her one of the rifles that sat on the back seat of the blue sedan. She has, she's had a great shot, and I trust her with my life. That's, uh, good, Lewis trailed off, jumping, jumping back when they heard the distinctive grinding noise of the gate opening. From a distance, he swatted a familiar head of strange blonde hair walking towards him, allowing himself to smile. He embraced Violet, Violet fiercely. Easy there, cowboy, he teased, she teased, patting him on the back. What's the matter? 
Louis looked back at Javi and then Violet, then at Violet. Taking a deep breath, he said, Clem's been kidnapped. What? Violet, Violet boomed, her eyes white as pla wide as plates. How? When? She stammered. Yesterday, he informed her. She was on a hunt with Gabe, and he lost track of her. I, I can't believe it. Javi and I are going to another community to ask for help from what I assume is their leader. Some Jesus guy or whatever, he said. And I thought today would be a normal day for one. She com she commented, her brow her brows knitted, tightly knitted. Hey Vi, wouldn't you mind keeping an eye on AJ? Lewis inquired. I left him with Gabe, but I don't really trust him. Not anymore. He's in his room right now. Violet nodded. Of course, I'll take him back to the school with me, she croaked. I'll tell the others as well. They will want to help, you know. I know, but for now, I have this under control, Lewis said, offering the blonde a weak smile. You know, you don't have to act so tough for me, right? Said Violet, raising an eyebrow. I can see right through you, she teased, punching him lightly on the shoulder. Without a second thought, Lewis embraced her again, finding back tears that threatened to spill from his eyes. Violet returned the, press the pressure, closing her eyes and thinking about all the times he consoled her. She'd be cursed if her best friend was going to go through this alone. We're going to find her, Lewis, she assured him, holding him at arm's length. I promise. And that was Chapter 9 of The Walking Dead Hope, a Walking Dead fan fiction written by Goopy Gomez. What do I think of it? I find this chapter to be really nice. Paragraph structuring is really good. Sentence structuring was nice. Um, the fact that Clementine was held in a prison cell against her will, that, that is, that is, that is, that, that can make anybody stand, sit at the edge of their seats, kind of waiting for what, what's going to happen to her. And Louis, and Louis and Javi embarking their adventure to saving their, their dearest friend. That is what I call an adventure. An adventure is right up Sonic's alley. <laughs> yeah, I just really hope that Clementine gets home safe, to, safe and sound. But other than that, this chapter is really good, and overall this story is really great so far. Now what do you all think of this chapter? Did you all like it or did you not? Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And are you enjoying this story so far, or are you not enjoying it? Don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below. <sighs> well, I better get on watering those plants. Besides, I think having them stay in the sun too long can make them a little irritated. But thank you all very, very much for watching. This is Cosmo the Cedrian signing off. See you next time. Bye!